So Photoshop versus Photopea. Premium paid versus free. I thought this would be a really interesting video to do because a lot of people are moving away from Photoshop or want to move away from Photoshop because of how Adobe has been treating its customers recently, which hasn't been great. There's been some frustration because of how they've been making sort of um, subscription cancellation fees really hard to, to find and people have been caught out with a lot of costs that they didn't plan for. And there's also some backlash against the updated terms and conditions where they were unclear on several ways that they could potentially use the user's data for training AI and things like that. So they've been in, they've, there's been a bit of a unrest in the Adobe camp recently. And because of that, a lot of people are looking to move to an alternative, preferably cheaper, and even better, free. So here's my video to say, look at the difference between these two, or should I say, look at the similarity. So on the left-hand side here, I've got Adobe Photoshop, which I do pay for because I use it for my day job. It's still industry standard software, you know, so it is still used by the majority of the creative industry. However, that's not to say that it should be used by everyone. And there's certainly a use case why Photop, which is on the right hand side here, could be all that you ever need. And I've matched the layouts of these two um, intentionally. This isn't exactly how Photoshop would look when I'm personally using it, because I have a different layout, a slightly different layout than this that I can't quite get in Photop just because it doesn't work or it's not 100% the same. It's very, very similar, but it's not 100% the same. So what I've done is I've done my best to match them together anyway. So I've sort of made the Photoshop layout more like how I would have my photo P layout. But it really is just a case of um, just closing a window and moving it a bit. But let's just give you a little run through of these two softwares. Obviously, if you've been to the channel before, you know what photo P is. But if you're new to the channel and you're a Photoshop user, firstly, welcome. And I think you'll find this interesting because I'm just going to do a very quick run through of what is similar and maybe not so similar about the two softwares. And going forward, I'm going to be trying to do some side by side comparisons tutorials in real time so that we can literally look at the, how the two different softwares handle the same task. Um, at the same time, which one's better, which one's not? What can we learn from how one works to do the other? But let's be honest here, Photo P is free, <laughs> you know, so you've got to bear that in mind. Um, Photoshop is subscription. I pay, I think it's like ten pounds a month for the for a heavily discounted version of it that I've had for years. It's obviously a bit more expensive than that normally, just for Photoshop, and then the rest of the package is higher. You know, tied into a subscription model that's tricky to cancel from. Um, Photo P, the main version is free. Now, I pay for it. There is a more premium version that is from $5 a month. It's a little bit more than that if you only want to pay for a month, um, but it's still very, very inexpensive. And it's a it's not a subscription model, sorry. So if you want to pay for Photo P, you pay for just a month, two or three months in advance Payment, that's it. No subscription, no rollover, no can, you know, nothing like that. So you only pay for what you want to use. Now, the only, the main difference between the free version and the paid version of Photop is the free version has a strip of adverts down the right hand side here, which you can't see because I've got the paid version here. And the only reason I use the paid version is because I don't want that distraction when I'm recording tutorials. If I was just using it for some casual, editing at home and I was running it full screen, that really wouldn't bother me at all. And there are a couple of other small um, details that are more efficient and available with the paid version versus the free, but they're so, they're so small in relation to the overall functionality. I don't even think it's worth talking about here. Just know that unless you're a very specific user of some very specific features, then the free version is all you're ever going to need. So with that being said, let's have a little quick look at the layout. Um, I think you're a Photoshop user. You'll be quite interested in seeing the similarity. So obviously we've got our tools down the left hand side here and they are basically the same tools or very similar tools grouped in the same sort of way. Um, a keyboard, keyboard shortcuts between the two softwares are very similar. Um, there's not many I found that don't work universally between the two, 
which is great if you're coming from Photoshop to Photopea because you can um, you don't have to feel, you don't feel like you're relearning the software because let's be honest as much as I love Photopea it's a bit of a I don't want to use the word rip off it's a it's a clone it's a well intended clone of Photoshop it's not a it's not an original product as such but also bear in mind Photopea is developed by one person so one person has developed this whole thing um, on their own. And I think that's a fantastic achievement. It's amazing, really. So we've got the toolbars are the same. And once you get down to the bottom, the color palettes, you know, the, the arrows to swap them. The quick mask mode is all very similar. Keyboard shortcuts are the same. Go up to the top. You see on the top here, just because of um, Photoshop, obviously an app that runs, you know, on your desktop. So the options menus at the top for it are integrated into your operating system. Well, it is on a Mac anyway, so it's got this menu hovering above it for like image mode and all the general options and filters. Whereas Photo P either runs in a browser or as a web app, like I'm using it here. So you can run it from your desktop, but it's still, it is still a web-based application. Um, and because I've run it as a web app, I've got it all, the menu's just built in here. So again, very similar. If you're looking down this filter menu, 3D Blur, Blur Gallery, this store you'll see a lot of very familiar things okay and all kind of the similar things you would expect and then down the right hand side we've obviously got the tools panels the tool windows and again very similar things not all exactly the same some of the icons are a little bit different but generally the the, the way they work is very familiar um, and if you want to add more you go to the window menu at the top and you can add and take away the various various tools just like you can in a in photoshop so again from that point of view very similar going towards the bottom you've got things like the new layer icon the group folder icon layer mask etc all kind of very similar effects you know your um let me just do that there yeah so you got the effects are the same layer styles that be blending modes you get the idea i don't have to keep saying how similar they are now when it comes to the layers and how the layers function there's one thing that's notably different and um it took me a, a few minutes to actually figure it out when i first used them so i will just show you this here let's say for example we create um let's say we create a curves adjustment layer and we want to um make that clipped to the layer below a clipping mask so it will only affect that layer on photoshop you hold the alt key and when you hover your mouse between the two layers it will turn into that icon and then you click and it will clip it to that icon and um it's all it will clip it to that layer and you can see that little arrow there on photo p it's very slightly different you don't click you don't hover your mouse in between the two things with the alt button held down nothing happens doesn't change at all you actually hold alt and you click on the curve icon itself and it will clip it to the layer below so that very small difference between moving it in between actually clicking on it at first i was like why can't i why can't i get and it was doing that and i'm like what's going on very simple once you know you know that's it it's just where you click it hold down alt click um and you actually get more of an obvious arrow on the photoshop side as well sorry on the photo piece up and it's done it's done its thing so that's broadly a comparison between the two. And like I said, in the future tutorials coming out very soon, I'm going to be doing the um, sort of tutorials in one and the other side by side. So again, everyone can see a real comparison between the two softwares and hopefully see how similar they are. And um, if I can tempt more people from Photoshop away from Adobe to using Photop, then I think that's a win 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 all round for everyone so thanks very much for watching and uh, sorry there hasn't been much action in this video but a lot of talking but i think it was necessary to just kind of set the scene for uh, any future comparison videos but thanks for now i will see you in the next one